Good morning, teachers and learners. Welcome to English Lessons for Grade 8. This lesson is based on the MELT or the most essential learning competencies suggested by the Department of Education for the Blended Learning School Year 2022-2023. Noting Context Crews Determine the meaning of words and expressions that reflect local culture by noting context clues. Context clues are hints found within a sentence, paragraph, or passage that a reader can use to understand the meaning of new or unfamiliar word. Context clues are important because comprehension and uses of vocabulary leads for academic success. Context clues can increase learners' vocabulary, reading comprehension, and make them better reader. Now, for the preliminary activity, we will answer the first five questions. And activity number one. Read the sentence or passage carefully and select the correct answer. Number one. No matter where you go, the internet is following you. Almost every portable device is being made with an internet connection. Most new televisions and many other appliances come with internet connections as well. The internet is truly ubiquitous. If something is ubiquitous, it means A. It is fuzzy and will bite you. B. It is everywhere. C. It costs too much money and literally it causes rashes. The answer is letter B. It is everywhere. Ubiquitous means it is everywhere. Number two. Speaking rudely to the president was a harsh behavior. You really hurt not only the president but also the citizen of the country. In above context, what does Harsh mean. Letter A. Excessively critical or negative. Letter B. Funny. Letter C. Trying to hide or disguise a piece of cheese. And letter D. With little thought or consideration. The answer is letter A. Harsh mean an excessively critical or negative. Four. Ricardo Dalisai is the protagonist in the TV series entitled Ang Provinciano. He is a police officer who protects his country and his loved ones from the evil forces in the society. In the above context, what does protagonist mean? Letter A. The main character of a story. Letter B. An animal that lives underground. Letter C. Someone whose first and last name start with the same letter. And letter D. Someone with bad body other. The answer is letter A. Protagonist means the main character of a story. Number 5. She was convinced that it would be a lucrative business to sell 
beauty products. It turned out she was not ready to make business and she lost a lot of money. In the above context, what does lucrative mean? Letter A. Tasting great vanilla ice cream. Letter B. Helping young feet to grow correctly. Letter C. Showing no careful thought. And letter D. Bringing in a lot of money or profit. The answer is letter D. Lucrative mean bringing in a lot of money or profit. Why do we need to study context clues and enhance vocabulary in English? Well, besides having more chances of landing a good job someday or advancing in your career. Learning second language can also give you an insight into other cultures. Now we have your simple teaching strategies that may work and that is how to find and use context clues. How to find and use context clues. Number one, look at the unfamiliar word then read the sentence before and after the word. Number two, connect what you know with the text. Number three, predict a meaning. Number four, confirm or revise your prediction. In other words, we can unlock the meaning of unfamiliar words by the ideas I, D, E, A, S, acronyms for letter I, inference. On inference, it is a conclusion rich on the basis of evidence and reasoning to form an idea. It is by using your prior knowledge or schema or in other words, a guess based on what you previously know. Letter D. Definition or explanation clues. Sometimes a word or phrase meaning is explained immediately after its usage. Letter E. By example, Clues is a word or phrases that provides an example to illustrate the unfamiliar word. Letter A for antonym. Sometimes a word or phrase is clarified by the presentation of its opposite meaning or its contrast. And letter S, its synonym or restatement. Sometimes a word or phrase is aiding in its simplest way, just like a definition or explanation or simply called restatement. Now, let us take a look, read, and try to understand the inaugural speech of the newly elected President of the Republic of the Philippines. President Bongbong Marcos and I quote This is a historic moment for us all. I feel it deep within me. You the people have spoken and it is resounding. My call for unity started to resonate with you. It did so because it echoed your yearning mirrored your sentiments and expressed your hope for family, for country, and for a better future. That is why it reverberated and amplified as it did to deliver the biggest electorate mandate in the history of Philippine democracy.
Now you may notice that there are words that may be familiar with others but are unfamiliar to some. We try to use this as an example. The word is historic. What is historic in the president trying to say? Now let us figure it out using inference. Although there are other words that could explain the phrase or the word historic, the biggest words or phrase that could explain it better is the phrase the biggest electoral mandate in Etsad in the history of Philippine democracy. And what is that? We can then infer that the biggest electoral mandate is the recently conducted national elections where the president won. Now, for the example of definition. The word is resounding, which if you can see in this context, it is very near to its dictionary meaning or definition which is to resonate. That is why if you will take a look at the word surrounding the unfamiliar word, you can really guess it or infer it and you can also use the definition as an example. The definition is already there. Not only that, we also have the word echoed, a synonym or better to say as an example. Okay? Example and definition is almost the same. Now, let's take a look at the next passage of the speech. President Marcos said, and I quote, By your vote, you rejected the politics of division. I offended none of my rivals in the campaign. I listened instead to what they are saying and I saw a little compatibility with my own ideas about jobs, fair wages, personal safety, and national strength in ending want in a land of plenty. I believe that if we focus on work at hand and the work that will come to hand, we will go very far under my watch. You believe that too, and I listen to your voices who are calling for unity, unity and unity. We will go further together against each other. Pushing forward, not pulling each other back out of fear, out of misplaced sense of weakness. But we are the furthest among the world or among the weak. The Filipino diaspora flourishes even in the most inhospitable climes, which is valued for their quality. As an example for Antony. We see here the phrase politics of division, which is the opposite of unity. The president emphasized unity not only twice but thrice when he said unity, 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 and that is also an example of repetition. Now, for synonym, which sometimes is also explained by example, the word unity is further explained by the phrase, I listen to your voices as an example, and also the phrase, pushing forward, not pulling each other back out of fear.
there's more. The phrase says, I offended none of my rivals in this campaign. In the phrase, I saw a little compatibility or incompatibility with my own ideas. These phrases are actually an example of antonym or contrast. Now for the assessment for the teachers. You may have this on the follow-up discussion in the next day or according to your time management or your schedule or simply according to your will. The materials used in this video is found on the description box of this channel and for the students, let's try to answer these ones. Read each sentence or passage carefully and select the correct answer. Number 1. If you don't curtail your spending, you'll be broke in no time at all. Which word is a synonym of curtail? Letter A. Reduce. Letter B. Follow. Letter C. Behind. And letter D. Buy. Number 2. Poor farmer Chavez labors 16 hours a day and never has time for a vacation. He deserves better. Everyone should have at least one day a week for rest and relaxation. In the above context, what does labor or labors mean? A. Place B. It's letter C works and letter D unions. Number three A wonderful ninety eight years old woman is working day and night to knit scarves to send the gifts for the troops. What a selfless person she is. Selfless woman means letter A is selfish, letter B has no name, letter C likes to wear scarves, and letter D cares more about others than selves. Number 4. IQ tests and MRI brain scans Researchers have found that the measurable intelligence of teenagers can rise and fall over time. We used to believe that intelligence was static, but now, because of new studies, we know that teens and even fully mature adults can grow more brain cells when needed. What does static mean in the above selection? Letter A. Noise. Letter B. Not changing. Letter C. Moldy. And letter D. Unreal. Using IQ tests and MRI brain scans, researchers have found that the measurable intelligence of teenagers can rise and fall over time. We used to believe that intelligence was static, but now, because of new studies, we know that teens and even fully mature adults can grow more brain cells when needed. What are researchers? Letter A. People who lose things. Letter B. People who search for knowledge. Letter C. Creatures from Mars. And letter D. Students who don't stood.
For number 6 and number 7, read each sentence. Underline the clues that define or restate the italicized word. Number 6 is done for you. Loose knee-length trousers called Galligaskins were the 18th century equivalent of short pants. Loose knee-length trousers called Galligaskins. So Galligaskins here is the italicized word and its equivalent or its meaning is loose knee-length trousers. Number 7. Ideal for polishing or grinding, carborundum is a very hard stone. Number 8. He called me Paisano, Spanish word for countryman. Number 9. Flanders, an area of Western Europe, now part of France and Belgium, was the site of World War I cemetery. Number 10. Her phobia of burglars, a totally unreasonable fear, led her to check and recheck the window lock every night. Thank you for watching our video. I hope you learned. Please like, subscribe, and share the video. Thank you so much. Until next time.